Hey guys, so in this video we're going to talk about a specific type of reduction reaction that can happen with benzenes, and that's called the Birch reduction. So let's just take a look at the general reaction for a second. What a Birch reduction does is it combines elemental sodium with an amine and alcohol to turn a benzene into what we call an isolated diene. So specifically if this were to happen with an unsubstituted benzene like we have here, our product would be an isolated cyclohexadiene, two double bonds that are far apart from each other in a 1,4 position on a cyclohexane. Okay? Now if you take a closer look at these reagents, they might look familiar because these are very similar to the reagents that we use on a dissolving metal reduction. This is a reaction from Orgo 1 that we learned a long time ago that worked with alkynes and it was a radical mediated mechanism. Well, it turns out that this mechanism is really the same exact mechanism, except it's gonna work with benzene instead of with an alkyne. So let's get right into it. The mechanism for this reduction is gonna proceed through elemental sodium, which means it's gonna possess just one electron, okay? When that one electron donates to any of the carbons, we're gonna to have to break a bond, okay? But this is gonna be a, a mechanism where we have a combination of half-handed arrows and normal arrows just like the dissolving metal reduction, how there were some arrows that moved one radical and some arrows that moved a lone pair. So when we make that bond, we have to break this bond in order to make room for the radical. And in order to keep these charges as far away from each other as possible, or these intermediates as far away from each other as possible, the, this double bond is going to ionize into a lone pair onto the very bottom. So basically, the furthest position possible from the radical, we're going to get an anion. So let's go ahead and draw the product of this first step. What we're now going to get is a single radical at the top, double bonds on both sides, and now a lone pair at the bottom, which is going to be a carbanion. Okay? So this intermediate is called a radical anion, which makes sense because that's what it is. It's a radical and it's an anion. Now guys, this is where our ethanol comes in. Our ethanol is going to serve as a protonating agent. Okay. Now just so you know, ethanol isn't the only alcohol you can use. Some texts will use terp-butanol. Doesn't matter guys, it's a source of hydrogen. That's the biggest deal. So E-T-O-H, my anion is going to grab the H and give a negative charge to the O. So now what I'm going to get is a molecule that looks like this. I've got my two double bonds, I still have my radical, but now I have two H's at the bottom because I had one originally and now I just added a second one, which is the one that came from the ethanol, okay? At this point, I react with another equivalent of my elemental sodium. That elemental sodium is gonna donate an electron to that same location and now I'm gonna get a lone pair anion. Okay, so this is just a carbanion intermediate. Okay, and guys, this reaction just repeats itself. That's one thing about maybe dissolving metal re reduction, if you recall, it was the same thing twice. So here we would react again with another equivalent of ethanol and we would wind up getting our isolated diene because now we've got H's, two H's on the bottom, I've got two H's on the top, and oh, that's the ugliest H ever, sorry. And I've got my isolated diene, which is this molecule here, okay? For this reason, the fact that it reacts twice, sometimes you might see professors actually write ethanol times two or alcohol times two. It doesn't matter, guys. It's just gonna have enough equivalence to make the reaction go to completion. All right, so that's really it. That's the mechanism for Birch reduction. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about specific regiochemistry that you have to consider with a Birch reduction. 